Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back for another video. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I'm starting to get really excited. I mean, this is like one of my favorite times of year. You know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about college football season. I just love this time of year going to football games and tailgates to root on our alma mater, go Hokies. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you something that you can make that's really gonna take your tailgates to the next level this season. I'm excited to show you guys. Let's get into the video. To get started on this project, I knew I was going to be needing some half inch plywood, so I headed to Lowe's with my cute little sidekick in search of some. Now, I could have bought a whole sheet, but I was short on time and I didn't want to haul it in the trailer, so I opted instead to just pick up some 2 foot by 4 foot sheets of sanded maple plywood. Now, I decided to go with half inch material here because I don't want these things to get too heavy since they will have to be towed back and forth from tailgate parties. Then it was time to get a plan together for this build. To do that, I used SketchUp to draw up a simple model for this build that allowed me to keep all of the measurements and math straight. Now, I feel like there was a bit of math with this project that I wanted to have nailed down in advance so that I didn't get too far into this project and then realize that I had royally screwed something up. Ask me how I know that. As it turns out, this is actually the second one of these projects that I've made. I made my prototype several years ago, I'll show you more on that one later, so I was well aware of all of the mistakes that I made on that one, and I wanted to make sure that history didn't repeat itself when it came to the 2.0 version. As you can see, I was going for a simple square shape that would have a grid system in the middle of it. If you're thinking to yourself, hey, that looks a lot like a game I used to play as a kid, maybe a little something like this? Battleship. Milton Bradley's great game of strategy. It's loaded with action and suspense. Play it anytime, anywhere. B4. Hit. J1. Ha! You missed. J10. Oh, you start my battleship. Just about everyone has heard of the game Battleship by now. It's a great game, one of my favorites as a kid. So I decided why not create a similar game but with a twist that will add a little fun to your next tailgate. And we're going to call it Battle Sip. Yep, I did it. I said it. It's official. Now, at this point, some of you might be thinking, that don't impress me much. But I promise this game is a lot of fun and it's a great addition to a tailgate party. We've enjoyed an earlier version of this game for many seasons. Now let me show you the first one I built so you can see some of the things that I changed with version 2.0. Alright, now I want to show you guys the old ones that I made so you can sort of get an idea for some of the things I've changed. Uh, on this back side hit here, I did paint it, but I just applied the, the sticker here, which it's held up okay. You know, I don't store these things outside, so I think that's part of it. Um, really rough plywood that I used uh, last time. So I definitely went with a higher grade plywood this time. I'm just going to set this here to prop this up for now. And now this was one of my first attempts at using a router. Um, and actually this was before I was even brave enough to use it by myself. I mean my dad helped me with some of these. Um, and as you can see none of them are perfect. I've got some smaller squares <laughs> than others and that's something that's always bugged me. Um, and you know that's something that I wanted to make sure that I fixed with these new ones. I wanted all of my squares to be even and um, so that's one thing I did. Also, one thing I did with the new boards is I made them a lot smaller. I mean, this thing is pretty big and pretty hefty. Um, then multiply it times two because you have two of these things and it's a little bit much to carry around. So I wanted to basically bring the size down a little bit and I definitely was able to do that. So in here, um, these are all just open grooves. Uh, I didn't fill any of this. Uh, that um, in the previous version which I did fill um, the new ones with so that makes a bit of a difference and then the last sort of thing is um, here I just kind of used this stencil and painted on um, they look okay but I did think I definitely was able to improve upon that as well and then for the old system I still have my hinges here but then 
I just had some hardware here to kind of prop them up against one another and kind of hold it in place. Um, I've got some ideas of how to improve upon that as well. So just wanted to give you guys an idea of what the old ones look like so you'll be able to see how I was able to update some of these uh, things with the new version. The first thing I had to do was take those two foot by four foot sheets of plywood and cut them down into square pieces that were 20 inches by 20 inches. I'm going to need four of these. Then what I did is I made a smaller square that was 14 and a half inches on all sides. To make this square, I simply duct taped some scrap pieces together to make this square. Now, this square is only going to be used to run my router along the edge, so it doesn't have to look pretty. I then took my ugly square and I placed it where I wanted it on one of my 20 inch boards that I cut and I lined it up so that it was where I wanted it. Once I felt that I had it good and centered, I traced a line around it for reference. Then I added some tape and CA glue to my board, sprayed the ugly square with some activator spray, and then placed it back in place according to the lines that I had traced. Now this will help hold down the square while I run my router along its edges. The goal was to route out some grooves that will form the grid system that is a big part of the game battleship. To route these grooves, I used a half inch straight bit that had a ball bearing on the top of the bit. This ball bearing would follow along the edge of my smaller square to give me the outer diameter for my grid system. Once I had that outer groove fully routed out, I popped that ugly square off and could get started on routing out the rest of the grid system. The next step was pretty simple, just time consuming. To route out the remainder of the grid, I clamped down a straight edge that was 2 and 1 16th inches from the edge of the groove that I had just routed out. Now I was going for squares that were 2 inches by 2 inches and I found that by setting my straight edge about 2 and 1 16th inches from that edge, I would end up with a perfect 2 inch by 2 inch square. So all I had to do was set that straight edge and run my router along it, giving me another groove and then shift my straight edge over 2 and 1 16th inches and repeat that same process until I got all the way across to the outer groove. Once one side was fully routed out, I flipped the board over and did the same dang thing all over again. Like I said, easy but time consuming. Once I had the grid fully routed out on one of my boards, I did the same thing for the other three. And I can confidently say that after doing this four times, I really had the system down. With the grid system taken care of, I set out to create some trim to add to the boards to cover up that exposed plywood edge. Now this wasn't something that I did the first time around, so I thought adding some walnut trim would spice these babies up a bit. So I milled up some walnut and cut strips to attach to the edges of my four boards. My trim cut to size it was time to get it attached to each of my boards. To attach it I used the combination of wood glue and brad nails. Now I admit on the first board I used way too many brad nails. 
I got a little carried away for a minute and then I realized that once the glue dried it was going to be plenty strong so I really only needed enough nails to hold it in place until it dried. So for the rest of the boards I used about three nails per side. Next up was to take care of the letters and numbers needed for the grid system. To tackle these, I broke out my Cricut to cut some vinyl letters and numbers that I could add to my boards. Now I'm not going to be leaving these vinyl letters and numbers on the boards themselves because in my experience, vinyl can start to peel over time. Instead, I'm going to use it sort of as a stencil essentially so that when I paint the boards and then remove these vinyl letters and numbers, I'll be left with the shape on the wood. You'll see what I mean a little later on. To apply my vinyl pieces, I first marked the center point for each of my squares, and then I used that center point as a guide to place my letters and numbers onto the boards. And since my next step was to get these boards painted, I taped off my walnut edge with some painter's tape. And even though this plywood was already sanded, I did run over it lightly with my sander and 220 grit sandpaper just to knock down any areas that the router might have roughed up. Once I had it good and smooth, it was time for paint. Two of the four boards are going to be used to keep track of your opponent's ships. So the method I chose for keeping track of them was to use some chalkboard paint on the grids for these two boards. Now in order for this chalkboard paint to be used with chalk, I had to make sure to apply at least two coats. And I applied three because I'm an overachiever. It, it's a problem. Anyways, once I had the chalkboard paint on two of the grids, I then painted the border a nice maroon color. Not gonna lie, I got a bit nervous after the first coat showed up so red, but thankfully it got darker with more coats. Oh, and by the way, the color scheme I'm going with for this project is maroon and orange, since those are the colors of my favorite team. Which team exactly? Oh, you know, the team. The team! The team! Go team! Go sports! Alright, can you just explain what's going on here? I thank you, I have no idea. <laughs> that girl gets it. Go sports! Anyways, that's why I'm going with those colors in particular for this project, just in case you were wondering. After letting the paint dry, it was time to fill all of those routed out grooves with some epoxy. Now I started out using Total Boat's high performance epoxy mixed with the slow hardener, but I had some issues with that setting up a little quicker than I wanted, so I used that for half of the boards, and then the other half I used the thick set epoxy, which gave me more working time, and I feel like maybe I got less air bubbles overall with that one. Now for the color, I used the color called Vivid Orange from Black Diamond Pigments. And I used about two small scoops of this. To apply the epoxy into the grooves, I decided to use some of these craft syringes. This helped keep the epoxy in the grooves themselves and prevented me from dripping much anywhere else. Now I can leave a link to these things below if you're interested in checking them out. I use them for a lot of projects. Now, for some reason, when I mixed this color into the thick set epoxy, it was such a weird reddish color. When I mixed this up and saw how weird it looked, I gotta admit, I was really bummed out in the moment because it totally didn't match the color I'd already poured, but I was not about to waste that epoxy. I mean, that stuff is ridiculously expensive. So I just went with it and I figured I would just leave it be and that would be tomorrow Sarah's problem. Well, to future Sarah's delight, when I checked it out the next day, the color had completely changed, and it was the color that I was hoping for originally, so I don't know what kind of miracle was bestowed on me overnight, but I was thankful for it. Hashtag blessed. Once my paint was dry and the epoxy had cured, I could pull all of those vinyl letters and numbers off and would be left with the wood grain showing through. Now, I was pretty impressed with how these turned out. 
I'm glad I had a Cricut to use for something like this because there was no way I could freehand something that would look this nice. I also went ahead and pulled all of that painter's tape off my walnut trim and it was time for me to get started on painting the other side of these boards. I know I just said I took the painter's tape off, but guess what? I put it back on for the other side of the boards. To paint this side, I pretty much had a blank canvas to work with, so I decided to use my Cricut to cut out my team's logo and attach it to my boards. Now this is where you could get really creative if you were making one of these for yourself. You can display your favorite football team's logo here, or maybe you're not even a fan of football. Maybe you want to make one of these to support your favorite professional pickleball team. Is that a thing yet? I heard pickleball is getting pretty popular. Whatever you choose, the backside of these boards will make a great place to get creative. Once all the boards were painted on each side, there was one more thing I wanted to do before adding finish to them. I decided to add a chamfer to all the edges just a bit with my palm router. Now since I had just painted these and didn't want to get them scuffed up from the base of my router, I just used a sheet of paper to run underneath my router to help protect the paint some, and this worked pretty well. Then it was time for finish. For the back sides of the boards, I ended up using some water-based top coat from General Finishes. And the last little touch for the back sides of the boards was adding some rubber feet to the pieces that are going to be sitting on the tape. For the other sides of the board, I decided to use some Halcyon Clear Varnish from Total Boat. I'm actually not even sure that's how you pronounce that, but hey, that's what I'm going with. Anyways, I decided to go with this because it seems to be super resistant to moisture from things I've used it on in the past. And well, since this game will involve some drinks, aka moisture, I figured it might be a good idea. Plus, like I said before, this is my second version of this build, and I remember how much we spilt on the last one, so I loaded this side up with finish. Overachiever, remember? Once I had plenty finished on these boards, it was really starting to feel like the game Battleship. Except there was something missing. What was it? Ah, yes, we need some battleships. Now I really hope you didn't believe that I was just going to make the boards themselves look all nice and then make the ships out of whatever I could find lying around. I mean, they might just be glorified cup holders, but I wanted them to look fancy. And when I want wood to look fancy, I use walnut. Cause she's a natural beauty, but she's also very fancy when finished. Now I was going to need 10 ships total, five for each player. The carrier ship would have five cups, the battleship four, the cruiser three, well, you get the picture. So my goal was basically to mill up this walnut board to get 10 battleships. Cut each of my ships to a width of 2 inches. I knew I needed them to be that width given my spaces and how big the cups I was using were. And as far as the length goes, I left them long for now and I would trim them to the correct length a little later. With all of my battleships cut, I marked the center of each of my boards and then I used the speed square to give me a rough 30 degree mark. Now these marks will help guide my angled miter cuts in just a minute so that I can cut these boards and make them look more like ships, duh. With my pieces marked, I set my miter saw to 30 degrees on one side and cut, and then moved it to 30 degrees on the other side and cut again. And what I ended up with is what looks pretty much like the front of a battleship. We'll go with it. 
Okay, now it was time to figure out where I was going to need to drill some holes for my cups to fit into. Don't forget this game is called Battle Sip after all. So in order for some sipping to be happening, I was going to need to add some places for these cups. And the cups needed to line up perfectly with my grid system. That's one of my biggest mistakes from my previous attempt at making this. Some of the ships didn't line up perfectly and that's just always bugged me. So I told myself if I ever made it again, I was going to get it right. So here I am getting it right. To do this, I took my ship and lined it up on the grid and then I marked on the ship where the center of the square fell on the ship. Then I just used my square to transfer those lines to the top of the ship and I made a mark where it met the center. This would tell me where the tip of my Forstner bit needed to be lined up. Also worth mentioning, the cups that I'm using here are just 3 ounce bathroom cups. They seem to work the best for boards this size. I did try some 5 ounce ones and the tops were just too wide to get everything to line up perfectly, so I ended up going with these. Then it was time to get to putting some holes in that fancy walnut. To drill my holes for the ships, I used the 1 and 5 8 inch Forstner bit on my drill press and I just drilled the amount of holes dependent on the size ship it was. Basically from five holes down to two holes. And after all my holes were drilled, I placed the ships on my boards and tested out the cups. And luckily, they were a nice, snug fit. Pretty much just like my jeans after the holidays. Anyways, I also marked the ships where I could cut them to size, and then I went and cut them to their final length on the miter saw. And finally, I wanted to knock down some of those sharp edges, so I used my palm router to chamfer all of the edges on these ships, making these things much softer. Which, you know, I'm not sure softer is really the type of adjective that a battleship is going for, but minor soft. All 10 of my battleships were not only fancy, but also soft. Even though these things were already soft, I needed to make them even softer. So I spent some time sanding them. I started at 120 grit and worked my way up to 220 grit. Then the last step for these things was to get some finish on them. Now since they are the main support for all the sipping activities, I decided to apply the total boat varnish to these as well. I gave them several good coats, which did take some time. If I had to do it again, I would probably just spray the finish on to save some time and maybe avoid as many runs. Then it was time to get my boards attached together. To do this, I made some marks about 2 inches in from the edge and then drilled and screwed some hinges in place to connect the two boards together. Okay, so one of my final steps for these boards is I need to find a way that I can sort of hold these two top pieces together. Now, on the previous version that I made, I just had some hardware here that kind of helped hold everything together, but you had to have the boards pretty far apart. And that's something that I sort of wanted to fix with this version so that I could keep the boards a little bit closer together. Now, as you can see, gravity wants to pull them in one way or the other, and it's just super unsteady. So that's something that I'm hoping to fix. And what I'm going to try to do is I'm gonna try to add some neomidium magnets to the side of the board here. Now those are just pretty much really strong rare earth magnets and my hope is that if I put some magnets in this side of the board here, when I hold, uh, put the boards together like this, those magnets will be strong enough to sort of hold this steady. Now this is a complete <laughs> trial. I have no idea if this is going to work or not. So. Um, I'm going to go ahead and work on adding these magnets and just cross my fingers and hope that this is going to be enough to hold these together and if not we'll be moving on to plan B. Now I ordered some neodymium magnets off Amazon that I planned on trying for these boards. 
Now I've used some of these magnets in the past and they're super strong so I had a feeling they might just do the trick. So when I saw a 255 count pack on Amazon for around $17, I thought it was just too good to be true. And as it turns out, it was definitely too good to be true. While I did receive 255 magnets, I mean probably, I didn't actually count, but only around 10 of them were size suitable for what I was needing and the rest of them were microscopic. I also feel like maybe they weren't quite as strong as some of these types of magnets I've purchased in the past, but it's okay. We all get duped by things we buy on Amazon sometimes, right? Anyways, to get these magnets attached, I drilled a very shallow hole in my boards with a four center bit. Now, I didn't have the exact size bit to match these magnets, so my hole was a little bit bigger than the magnets, which isn't ideal, but at this point in the project, I didn't want to spend any more money, so I went with it. To attach the magnets, I applied some CA glue to them and I placed them in the hole that I drilled. All right, I got one magnet on each side so far. I am probably gonna add some more, but this is just uh, a test to see if this is even gonna work at all. Let's see. So one is definitely not going to be enough. Um, and I'm not 100% sure even if I add more uh, here that that's going to keep it upright. So I think what I'm going to have to be forced to do is come up with some sort of system here that can kind of help hold these pieces up. So let me do some brainstorming and figure that out. Even though I knew it wouldn't be strong enough to keep it completely stable, I did go ahead and add two more magnets to the bottoms of the boards. Okay, so the magnets do hold it together, but it's not quite strong enough to hold it completely on its own. So I uh, had to move on to plan B and what I'm going to try next is I'm going to drill a hole through this piece here that I can insert these bolts through and, and use a washer nut on the other side to kind of hold it tight. Still again, no idea if this is going to work or not, but you know, I got to keep trying something to figure out uh, how I'm going to be able to keep this uh, steady. So. Next, I just have to drill a hole through uh, this piece on both sides. Um, there's nothing that makes you quite as nervous as drilling a hole onto a piece that you're pretty much finished with because if this doesn't work, I'm just gonna have two uh, massive holes in my piece that I'm gonna have to deal with, so. All right, let me go ahead and get to drill. All right guys, you don't know how happy I am that that actually worked because I did not want to have just massive holes to fill. So as you can see, I put a washer and this bolt through on one side and then over here, I've got a wing nut that you can use to tighten it. And then when you want to collapse the boards down, you just take that wing nut off, take the bolt out and then these two pieces will be able to close. But um, that really did secure it quite a bit. I mean. It's stable enough to where you can write on it and it's uh, plenty, plenty steady now. I might add some things in the future just to make it even more steady, but I think this is gonna be plenty good to be able to go ahead and start using these things. guys and that's how you do it. I hope this video gave you an idea for something really cool you can add to your tailgate this football season. If you liked the video make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons that really helps my channel grow and I'd really appreciate it. And with that said I'll be seeing you guys for my next video and happy football season. Bye.